a pardon in progress. It's not quite Joanna Lumley, that is it? Oh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know how Joyce does it. I can. Oh, it's really good. It's mm. brilliant. I've, have you noticed on the, uh, if I, I press um, shift U on the computer and it equalizes all the colors mm. as well. Mm. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, like if I was doing a card of it, I'd probably save that one and print that one rather than the other one. Mm. Only reason is, and I, I've said this before, uh, when I when you produce like greetings cards to sell, this is your you're getting your money's worth here, Noreen. <laughs> <laughs> what well, you want? They're only small images. Or, you know, they have to shout out a bit more. They're not like the picture of 2016 or the people you can get up and have a look at. So they've got to look good from a distance. Nice. Or from yeah. a so if you do that, you know, brighten them up, just mm. balancing the colours. OK, it's not <coughs> it's called the original, but it sells the card better. Right. Yeah, a bit it's, like not... with, it's a bit like that with prints as well. You can sort of bite the bullet and throw the purest thing out of the way and think of the pain sign. Mm. Not that we're doing much of that at the moment. I was talking to um Alan Hayden artist on the phone yesterday. Um and he was saying because I look after his website, can you uh, you're gonna have to do something for that because it's all focused around um exhibitions. Well mm. we ain't doing none now. That's what it oh. looks like on the board. Okay. She doesn't stretch her paper in either choice. No. I don't know. Perhaps she just, <laughs> I just said this, she super glues it down or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I'm going the wrong way. Cancel that. We got... Oh, that's good. Anne, Anne's Ooh. gone back to doing these. Oh. I was looking at, I said to Anne the last week, I said, I think I know that guy. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've, I've got a hat like that somewhere. It's <laughs> good. Yeah, it is. Mm. Joyce said to me that the, oh, Chrissy's one arm, Chrissy, wrong arm. Oh, wow. That's good, isn't it? Oh, that's Just, good. She posted that to me and sort of said, that's as good as a, I'm going to get. <laughs> oh. uh, Chrissy's got her arm in a plaster or just had right. it broke her wrist. So oh, she's got to paint left handed. That's fantastic, then, isn't it? It is. Mm. It is absolutely amazing. It's not easy, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. yeah, that's good. It is very good, very imaginative as well. Mm. Well, I just couldn't cope with all the detail this week. No, I don't blame you. No. How? No. Well, today's subject's not much better off for that. Who's that one? Is that our cow? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're all good. They yeah. are? Yeah, really good. You've really got his face. Yeah. Yeah. Got the likeness. Well, I got in a mess with his fingers round the, round the can. <laughs> that was a bit hard. Yeah. No, that's good though. <laughs> I haven't finished mine yet. Oh, no, okay. right. no pressure. Well, I'll <laughs> no. tomorrow morning, please. I was, I was, I was babysitting no. all last weekend, so no, I know. I kind of. It's terrible. I don't know. This week I've been um, out in the garden, sawing up bits of wood to make big frames to put in on the window for on the you know oh. on the windows with that um. That, that um that secondary glazing film so i'm gluing that on and then pushing the frames on to try uh -huh. and save a bit of energy in that mm. so that takes time so I, that's probably why i haven't done much either but this week's subject is just as flipping awkward <laughs> All right. in terms of um you know sketching it and that when are we going to have an easy one? <laughs> well, the problem is that every, 
that everyone's doing such <laughs> uh, well such good stuff i, I think mm -hmm. I, i've got i could keep pushing it out but yeah i need a break <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was this week last week we did well well done I, i'm not gonna i the problem is normally you sort of do this and you'd sort of we'd have a little critique and say well that one's you could do this and all that but you know half of them are better than mine anyway no <laughs> no everyone's we're all equal we're all on equal they, they, no i used to always go on and then like no one you can't criticize art mm. because it's um well i learned that years ago hang on i'm just trying to find something we will get some painting done in a minute poetry <laughs> I used to find all the snobbery went out of me a hundred years ago or back in 2000 when I first started exhibiting over at Pine Walk at, over in Bournemouth Gardens um, trying to flog pictures and you, you're you new to it and all the rest of it but and I, I sit there watch little old ladies who's, who sell you know paint one a month one a year they were selling pictures hand over fits oh gosh you know you'd look at it and you think well that i wouldn't call it a, a sort of doodle or what it was their naivety and their charm which was making them beautiful and art and mm. it's a, it's a it's a smack in the back of the neck to tell you to shut your mouth up and look at things in a different way, way. yeah I know I wouldn't I could uh, everyone paints their way and this is today's thing oh well I don't know it wasn't <laughs> until I was I was Joyce t talking to Joyce and she said yeah it's about a pregnant woman and I thought what I didn't even know oh yeah I just noticed that because I was looking at the images <laughs> you know from the from the distance oh uh, Noreen, I yeah. lately we've been get I've been getting the reference subject matter from um Paint My Picture, which is a website. Right. right. Um where <clears throat> it's it's not national, it's all over the place. People take photographs or whatever and they put them on there and it's all there's no copyright or anything. The artists can go away and paint the picture. So right. That's what we've been doing for the last few weeks. Um, and going forward, I'm going to carry on doing it. Um, because otherwise, you have to pay a, a license fee. And I think the cheapest one I know is about 12 quid for to, to, to use an image and paint it for artist groups and that. And I thought, no, I'm not doing that. So, But this is really unique, really good. Because you can, we can paint the pictures, and what I do is I'll I'll I'll, I'll do it with the guitar man. Is re-upload them to show the the photographer what your art what your artwork looks like. Oh, wonderful! It is it, it's really humbling. Um, the lady who we did a portrait of a few weeks ago, she was she emailed me and put comments on that. She, Wow, that's me. She was going, oh wow. She was so cockahoo. <laughs> the um this painting, I mean I've I'm not I'm not it makes a change for me. I'm not doing the whole thing. Oh. I, I just got I just thought no, I'm not gonna do it. It's too predictable. I concentrate on try and do a Joyce and do break it down into something else. Mm. And the colours as well, it's bronze, isn't it? It's bronze or a copper one. Oh, no, it wouldn't be copper. Somebody would nick that, wouldn't they? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> it's screwed it down. must be big, mustn't it? Because you look at the size of yeah, the... Yeah, people, yeah. It's huge. Ilfracombe, isn't it? Yeah. Ilfracombe Harbour. Never, I'm, I'm a proper wurzel and I've never been there. <laughs> yeah no we went there this year yeah so in the end i i've, I've actually sketched it twice and yesterday i thought mm, 
I'll have it. So I just did um had a had a splish splash blosh session and did one of those sort of wacky backgrounds. I thought that might be an interesting way to approach it. Do it. I th so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, try and combine the two really. So we have to try and put a a positive um, uh, look feel to the original to the figure, but I'm not. I was looking at it this morning or last night and this morning, thinking, shall I, shan't I? How to there's two approaches to the um the figure do i want to do it like copper weathered copper or could i do it a different way so as per usual i haven't really got any preconceived it's <coughs> like please method it, it, uh, look at me palette think what think what Go with the flow, yeah. Go with your feelings. <laughs> oh, it's a kiss of death, isn't it? <laughs> I just find it better to paint like that anyway. It's what you'd have to do if you were outside. You know, and let me get the, the right camera. Ta -da. But I have sketched it twice actually, so that shows my insecurity. <laughs> Change microphones. We are recording. Yep, get that right. Thanks, Chrissy. Okay. Here I'll go. We could have an early lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm leaving early anyway, <laughs> early-ish. Well, I did, <sighs> you see, I, do, I saved a bit of time. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. I saved a bit of time because I I did the splish, splash, blosh, didn't I? Yeah. But I did, do, I did do a video of that, so I'll put that at the front or the end of the one I put up. It was quite interesting sketching it i must admit but i did oh there's that one and i did another one which was a longer view so mm. the splish splashing was better on there actually but it's different palette as well i've used i found because that doing those backgrounds like that the what I can see, the way to do it is just to use base colours, primary colours, primary as in red, blue, green, just those like that, just red. They seem to work better. Ooh. But what I did do was, I don't I had a thing when I was doing it about a fleshy tone within the background without getting arty farty so I, I used <laughs> some of the the flesh colour in my palette just to and flicked it with the brush but, but trouble is watercolour it dries back so much that you're always um, well it always fades so and it fades back and then the next morning you think oh what happened there but mm -hmm. I, the way I'm going to do this I've got me a little photo mm -hmm. oh I went shopping sorry yeah. <laughs> well Remember, I, we used to do those scrawler boxes. I don't know if Noreen's heard of them. Yep. You, you can s subscribe to, I don't know what it is now. It was about £15 a month. And uh, every month they send you a sort of a C5 box. 
a little box of chocolates but inside are loads of different um art th things that you wouldn't normally think or buy off they they i don't know how they do it. they and a little sweet and some paper you know a block of I don't know. This is one of them. I've got like dozens of them. Watercolor paper, books. You know, it's all themed on a particular artist and what they use. And they send you all the the tools to do it. A sort of a little challenge. Mm. One of them, one week was one month was a a black wing pencil. And it's starting to get a bit short. Mm. And, the, and but these black wing pencils are the ones that. Um, Disney illustrators use to do their cartoons and that. Right. Because they're and they're really expensive. I mean, those, these ones, the, the scrawler box ones, they got them on eBay. They're about three quid each, three fifty delivered. But I mm. went I went the the extra mile and, and the original one is called a Blackwing 602. How about that? Oh. <laughs> so I ordered one of those. I can't remember how much it was. I think it I didn't get much change. Have a tenner for a pencil, <laughs> but the um yeah. the idea behind it all, or why they like them, it's some um, special. Well, it's graphite, isn't it? But it's it's half the weight. You you only have to put. You don't put hardly any pressure on the pencil to get a nice line. Obviously, you can press it higher. So that's the theory, the thinking behind it. So I've fallen into that trap. <laughs> Well, I used to think, oh, I don't know what they're on about. These aren't just a pencil, but it's one of these things that you get acclimatized. And after a while, you start using it more and more. And I quite like that one. So I, I've got a, but I will get another one of these. They're on eBay. I'll just scrawler box. How do you spell it? C S C R A. W L E R scroll as in scroll. Color wise, I haven't changed my pat palette for ages, have I? <laughs> but I'm running out of certain colors. That color there is mocha. The ones I use, Noreen, or I. I've gone off um, piece to bit is the um, St. Petersburg paints. It's my main set of paints. You can get them online. Right. Remember the old St. They used to come in. Well, you can get. I think some of us have probably used them, don't you? The, yeah, I've got them, yeah. You can get the big... Well, well, when people first yeah. start out, they always say, what paints shall I use? What's a, and I say, just go and buy and the paint, a set of the St. Petersburg paints. There's the big set, but there are uh, smaller ones. Yeah. And they'll last you a lifetime. And, and then yeah. they're as good as anything you can get. And the colours are... I mean that these are I don't know four or five years old. Easy. And they're still tacky. Well, some Ooh. of them, most of them are still a bit tacky. You just spray them every now and then. But even without spraying, some of them are they must put a lot of gum arabic or something. And the colours are quite intense as well. So they they're good. I like them. But they also do tubes. So I just buy the tubes and some of the colours. Um, the the most one of the most nice use, useful colours is stone, but they don't do stone, but they do one called dune, which is sort of a sandy colour. So that's quite good, and their their um flesh is flesh goes with anything. It you use it to tone mixing with other colors tone it down or if you want to paint someone it's handy mm -hmm. but we still use if we still use raw sienna and 
permanent rose. Gives us a nice fleshy comb. Or it used to. <laughs> Till I went a bit well. Wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, but you just you start off one way. But as long as you're only using two colours, you can tone it down quite nicely. It's quite strong, but it just needs a bit of water in it, doesn't it? When you see it on the paper, hey. There, there we go. What's wrong with that? <laughs> but normally you'd make it, you'd have your, there's a little face there, you put clean water on and just drop it in anyway. So, yeah, there or thereabouts. But it's much easier just to get a tube of flesh and go, <laughs> go like that. <laughs> well, you get consistent results, but you can add to it. So even then, we just add a bit of our homemade variant in, and we've got some shades and shadows in, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So there's a, as I say, while I was on there, I just bought Mocha, which is, oh, we were doing um, a, a colour, more darker skin, wasn't it? Oh. So I, I thought, oh, Mocha, maybe that would do nice. But it, it turns out it's, it's a nice fleshy colour anyway. They're all the same, mm. sort of out of the same, same family of tones. Anyway, that, I've got two, I've got a rigger to play with. I've all sorted my brushes out. I'm rearing to go. The other colour that I'd recommend, and I bought too many, but I've got about three or four tubes of this, is Terry Harrison's, um, not that one, Terry Harrison's Shadow. I've been using that quite a, well, there's a blob of it in the thing, and it lasts for weeks. So the God knows how long the tube's going to last. <laughs> the reason for that is is what we're always in a watercolor. You're always trying to get a shadow tone. So turquoise, cobalt turquoise is the key, and add a little bit of permanent rose to that, and you'll get a various degrees a shadow tone. You have to keep tweaking it until you get what you see as a shadow tone. But those are the two. Gives it that nice neutral, especially with figures. But as I say, the shortcut is to buy the Terry Harrison's shadow. Look, it's not far off what I just did. Mm -hmm. You could say it's like an off grey, but it's more, more than grey. It's got a more of a a personal well it gives you everyone sees it different so the chances of your grey being my grey or my mm. shadow being your shadow is not the same so anyway I've sketched it out with my posh pencil First, I'm going to stick with the um, sounds like Christine's got the postman. I think as the weeks have gone on, I'm too far away from the screen to mute her. Um, as the weeks have gone on, but, uh, or time's gone on, I've changed the way, or uh, I'm trying to get a balanced approach to the way you paint. And just now, I've just, just I'm just, um,
BBC, I have to edit the videos. Um, <laughs> as I was saying, what I tend to do these days, I look at the approach is, is quite handy. What's one thing I've learned from painting all these pro uh, portraits is look for tone, the, the, the mid-tones or the shadowy bits and using this nice blend of <laughs> shadow color you know make it weak or stronger use that to initially look at your picture and paint no, just paint the shape of them even though you've got your your sketch but that just guides you roughly where you want to want to put it so just look for the look at the, the that's why i tend to use the black or Send people the black and white ones. Amazing what you can do in Photoshop. Be lost without it, really. Just look for those shadows. This is where I'm approaching it. It seems to be working quite well. Which is the way you paint portraits. Well, it seems to be the consensus by all the great portrait people that I've been looking at and follow well they keep the mal gallery keeps sending me emails i must have joined their list at some point um and every time there's an exhibition on so and so sends out a, an email saying that it's on hey dave go on to the mal gallery and i flick through the images and sort of look at how they approached it. Tell you the truth, a lot of them are no better than ours. Matter of fact, I've said some of ours are better. Oh. Which is going back to what I was saying. Everything's got a theme with me, isn't it? Going back to what I was saying uh, just now about the little old ladies at the exhibition out selling. Oh. The, the seasoned wannabe pretend we're the proper artists, you know. But it's the same. Remember that thing in watercolour? I just did it there. Put a blob of colour on, clean water, and soften it down. Just let it, let the water do, do as much of the work as you can. It's going to be another bit. There's a nice bit under the arm here, isn't there? So a strong piece of colour. That's a bit stronger than that, actually. Is that money using the one colour at the moment? Put a line in, wiggle your brush in the water, and just soften it down. And you want it to go right down. This, this in a way, um, I was going to say, this is the... sketch her arm i think i did her hand i mean it's the the work you do now besides it's, it can be a bit monotonous a bit boring but the bit that you do now is what dictates how things are gonna go later it's, you're setting the the boundaries for what you do next when you put the what's the word the, the flesh on the bones I love that. yeah which is what you're going to do isn't it there's an example there a bit of strong color and just tease some clean water around it <coughs> you missed the fun earlier mel had to dash out to um well i didn't know she just sort of Said so I've just got to pop out to Waitrose. I'm guessing it was to pick up a birthday cake for James. Yeah. He's, maybe something like that. So she had to dash out and left me with a dog. So I'm, and the dog like misses his mum. 
<laughs> so I sat there starting the um the Zoom session with little Frodo the Shisu on me that Shitsu, <laughs> however you say it. Because he was like they get like that, don't they? Mm. Miss me mum. Mm. Where's she gone? Where's she gone? Other than that, he won't sit there, will he? <laughs> Tried in. He's a good icebreaker, though, isn't he? Oh. Puppy, little puppy dog, I call him. Got soaked this morning. Okay. Well, got to take him out, hasn't he? Mm. Otherwise, he didn't do it. There is the old alternative way of doing it, and that's to put clean water down first and then use a little bit of paint to blend in I think I'm a bit too far there look for the shadows there's a nice there's a nice area let's move the picture up a little bit makes it um A nice line of colour, clean water, and drag it down. Don't go over the bold, the strong bit of colour, just the, the bit at the bottom. Tease it down. It's quite dark in there, isn't it? Yeah, I was blowing a gale, I was out there, it's blowing. Mm. And round the park where I was with the dog, it's like, oh. All tree lined, isn't it? I'm thinking, oh, blimey. and there's bits of bits of tree all around because I very often pick up um, fallen branches, put them in the boot of the car, and then use them to start the fire. The leaves, the ones with leaves on, are great fun. You put them on the fire; they all it's like firework night. <laughs> Spitting at this, oh, so I didn't. I forgot about all that. So anyway, I'm continuing on my journey of looking for shadowy bits. You see any? It's it's almost painting in the negative. Um, but not quite. But if you sometimes, well, more often when you're doing a a, for, a portrait, it can have. Um, it's amazing how you step back. I'm I'm sat down as it happens at the moment. But you, when you stand back, you can almost see the the picture. It, it appears. So it's almost a bit of magic to it, just by put, just looking at shadowy shapes and adding adding them on. Ooh, that was a bit small. Okay, now we're getting a bit of water on that. I haven't even got a piece of tissue in my hand today. Okay, just in case. one of the it's a bit it's a bit like um um your little little grandson or your kids when they're growing up they always have a comforter don't they <laughs> and they sort of sit there sucking well I think I'm a bit like that with when I'm painting if I have I have a tissue in one hand brush in the other It's sort of, you know what I'm, I know where I am. I did paint some pencil in the um, some lines where the sinews or muscles or whatever they're called that are on the on the image on the picture on the statue. So one of the 
one of the things I thought I'd do was use my shadow color. I can see them. It's trouble, isn't it, with pencil lines? As soon as you start painting, they sort of have this knack of disappearing. Which for the purists, that's good, isn't it? Makes you become a proper artist. None of this using pencils to guide you. <laughs> what? Use a pencil? <laughs> you can hear it, can't you? What's the other one? Oh, you traced it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Used a pencil to sketch it. There are artists around that can do it without, but the price of a pencil, what's the problem? And uh, if you're trying to paint something half decent in a short term, pencil's pretty handy thing to involve it, uh, have a go at. All the old masters, they used to trace things all the time. It's what you do with it afterwards that's important. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to do it. Sometimes you, I used to do it a lot for um, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Um, trace around the subject for him. One invariably, I'd end up finishing off his picture anyway. But the tracing lines, sometimes you you might get three or four. That's what I was going to say. But you might get a rough idea of what the image is through the trace lines. But they, you couldn't really say say that. Oh, that's so and so. You ended up sketching it. Um, mostly anyway it's just a confidence it's the same with the grid that I like to use these days if you just said to me even six years five years ago use a grid I'd have just dismissed it out of hand and said nah can't just use the pencil but just go for it but it, sometimes when I'm doing it if you've got the grid Where's one? Because I just do it on the just the one from last week. This way around. That way around. This is one from last week. The um guitar man. And I'll tell you who I got this off of, this method of pencil you can pencil the grid. So you've got your your original picture with a grid on it as well and start sketching it. I got that doing it on a tracing paper, or this detail paper, you've got it forever. But the thing about it is once you've got the grid and you start and you've got an, an image like, where's the one I've got for today? Like that with the lines on it. Gives you so much confidence to paint when you start sketching, because you just sort of say, "Well, it's hot. the distance there is about half." Oh, yeah, right. So you don't have to put the. It's as good a drawing as I could do. Mm -hmm. I took, as I say, the person I got it from, who who does it a lot, is um, world famous genius, Roger Dean. I've. During lockdown, that was the beauty of lockdown, you know. Mm. All these artists, obviously there were no exhibitions, so they were all out there doing um, <coughs> online lessons. Some of the, you know, the good and the famous people like Roger Dean, who did the who did the Yes album cover and the the Yes logo. He's still my mate on Facebook now. 
sends me stuff. He even did a course. Yeah, <laughs> don't go there. How much? <laughs> I don't know. It was a couple of grand. Wow. For a, oh, it was a few sessions, but he was he would he was recommending ah same as I was the um you know people are asking well, I'm going to join your six week how to paint class and it was about well, it was at least a thousand pounds it was quite a lot beyond my budget anyway and uh what paints do we use and, and he was doing that he recommended get these just the saint petersburg ones oh, i thought uh he's copying me now <laughs> he's been watching my my videos and that But he's a, you know, the great and the good. They come out in in um during lockdown. I'm not sure if I'm going to put put a oh, gone. There's no sketch there. I'm just putting it in because it looks like it should be there. Balance, isn't it? But I wanted it the bit the sword. And the extremities to fade by by that uh, not quite in fog, but not to be strong. I wanted it just to fizzle off of the paper. So just a little bit, a bit strong, a little bit of the shadow colour there. The face is really. I'm going to have to pop over to Ilfric at some point and have a look at this thing. I think it's a bit like um, Marmite. You either love it or hate it. It's very mm -hmm. strange. It's very big as well. It's enormous. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. The, the scale of it compared to the figure, the people that are standing by. Yeah, it's huge. It looks like a monkey at one, some, it looks like something from Planet of the Apes. It's almost a skull, I think. Yeah. I think that's... But it's a good exercise. Mm. You could actually, um, if it's a bit boring doing this, you could actually just use one <coughs> colour, paint it in sepia or... <coughs> Yeah. Something like that. And that would work quite nice. Yes, yeah. But it's a good exercise. Well, they're all good exercises for watercolours anyway. It's no, there isn't a bad one that I'm aware of. I'm I'm the worst person for this anyway, because this part of the uh, these sort of initial stages. Some artists, some watercolorists call it blocking in. You're sort of blocking in the picture ready for, you know, setting it up. If you do um, portraits with oils and that, and that's how you do it. You just sort of dab a piece of... Uh, a stroke there look at the stand back look at the shape of another part maybe it's at the head put another mark there and you just build it up slowly so in watercolor we're we're fortunate in that respect that we can use a a pencil and thing what was I saying? Oh, I was saying about the um during the lockdown there was um, learned a lot. I was I'm really missing it because <laughs> all these artists were who is it? Mark Entwistle. He's a brilliant portrait artist and a, quite a nice commentator when he's doing painting as well because he's not like me from the gutter. <laughs> he's all posh. <laughs> well 
I, what I mean by that, he's he's got he's more eloquent. His English is um, he knows he knows words that I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an education, isn't it? His video is brilliant. I've got a link somewhere. I might. I ought to. I'll send you the link for it. It's on YouTube. He did a a charity one for. I think it was a brain trust during. Because obviously during lockdown the charities were really struggling. There'll be a shadow on there, won't they, from over there? Um, so that some, you know, well-known artists and that were doing. One of the things they were doing were selling, you know, online Zoom demonstrations of them, how they did it. Who was the other one? Roger Deller? He was good. No, he was he was the one that um, cost me a fortune in um, white gouache because he uses watercolour with white gouache in it and these mind you oh, everything's got a positive in it because introduced me to these evergreen oil brushes from rosemary and co now i've got a little bundle well, i say that i've got three that i know of. the flat one which is great for doing structural work on portraits and the um oh where's it gone ah in the brunt is in the water ah falling in the water there you go a round one number five six they're great they're stiff as well so it's a it's a journey this painting monarchy but you can't do it you can't it, it doesn't happen overnight I'm 92 now and I've never known nothing like yet. I'm <laughs> still learning at 75, you know. <laughs> I was over the park walking the dog the other day, talking of age. And I was stood there chatting to this guy like in because I was doing some litter picking and he was commenting, oh well done, and all this. And um I had a chat to him. Gee, he, was not, he said, well, it's all right for you young ones. And I thought, oh, I don't feel that. He said, when you get to my age, 95. And I thought, crikey. I would never have guessed he was 95. I said, I said to him, I said, I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> I better write a book. Let, us, let, let the secret out. Lovely man. Amazing. Yeah, but um, Mark Entwistle's, he's a good, he's a good, he's very good. He's the main instigator of doing this, um, A, using uh, cobalt turquoise, because that's one of the colours he uses a lot, and using... Um, it's the, what they call it Giselle technique where you use cobalt and to form a shadow tone paint the shadows in of the figure first it's a, a portrait technique that, um, that's been going for a lot and say thousands of years, but it's hundreds. It's what the um, the old masters used to use. One of the techniques you need to put a line there, don't I? And push it up, not down, because that's where the head is. Might be waffling on, but I am thinking a little bit what I'm trying to do. It's funny when you stood back because you, well, sorry, when you sat down because you're a bit, you're closer to it than what, 
You don't get that. It's, it's the thing about the, doing this because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. I'm not looking at the the screen or anything. I'm got the. And when you stand back and look, you think, "Cool, oh, you either get a surprise or a disappointment." <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's not what I thought I was painting. Invariably, the um, the thing that affects me is the light from the video camera or the little camera mm. up above to what it is does it match what's on the screen i'm looking at it roughly now it's not far off is it the same as what i'm seeing of course you've got the other the other problem that well not problem the other issue is that every everybody's monitor is is slightly different as well um yep 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 while well, that's um but you can see we can you can spend as little or as much time as you like on this i don't want too much detail on that you can spend ages building it up and then when you I was going to say just now, the problem with me is I've got a, a boredom threshold, a low boredom threshold. So I, I have great aspirations at the beginning to get everything honky-dory and brilliant. I'm going to put loads, and then I get up so far and I think, Do you know, this is getting on my nerves. I don't want, I think it depends on the individual, but well, I'm sure it does, but it's what you're attracted to. And if it, if sometimes you, you see a watercolor and you think, cool, that's brilliant. How do they do that? Because it's loose. There's hardly any lines in it, but you can see what it is and it's all, Lovely and rosy. So you try and when you start, but every, when you start painting it, you think oh, I'm putting in too much detail. There's too much going on. Too busy. Less is more. Everyone says that, don't they? In watercolors yeah. or in any painting, really. Otherwise, just. Take a photo. I've got a little bit of background, foreground, sorry, not background, that I put in. But even there, on this bit here, I, I got bored when I was sketching it because I can see I've just gone <laughs> with the pencil. <laughs> there's some lines there to say there's something going on, but I don't know what it is. But the... um. Could have a bit of fun with the building. And we'll rush just for a walk. Got another nice little brush. This is Terry Harrison. What is it? If I do it enough, I'll remember what it is. Golden detail small. I'm assuming that his wife still sells his paintings. Uh, brushes i know there was one color one of the one of his colors that he invented or had made but she said once it's there's only so many left and once this is gone i'm not ordering any more and that color that i'm using there and charlie evans uses um Actually, he sells stone. He call is it call it no? He calls it sand. I call it June or Saint Petersburg. Call it June, but he sells sand, 
color called sand, which is a neutral color that you can use on buildings. So I'm just going to, I'm doing what I tell people not to do there. Going up and down like that with the brush instead of doing nice strokes. While it's damp, drop in some other colors. There's a bit of that nice fleshy tone. Drop that in. Just have a look at the building to say, well, is there any shadow there that I want to enhance? Just drop it in. Anywhere. So that was that flesh tone that I mixed up earlier. It's a little bit of blue, turquoise blue. Just try it on a bit of the side. One thing that I do, Noreen, yeah. is I stretch my paper, even though some of it is like really thick, like yeah. forward. You wouldn't need to stretch it really if you didn't want to, but I still stretch it because I use I use the you know the paper tape. Right. There's some links on my um on the website there to, that I show you how to do it. it only takes minutes. Okay. But I use the reason I do it is because I use use it as a mixing palette. <laughs> right. Okay. I've just done it there. I've put the blue that I'm going to drop in this building on just dropping it in. But I didn't want it too solid. It gives you the options. So I do it a lot. Just drop some of those colours in. Then you can get a, get a flat brush. It's one of those. It usually works well with walls, but that's quite such a small space. I don't think I need a. Oh, I okay. what? I'm just trying to find a brush with a, a lesser. A bit narrower. You can just pull it down with a dry brush. It sort of dries off, dries off back and makes it look like a building. You can drop loads of different colours. Once you've got the stone effect, which is dune or sand, is um, paint it with that. Okay. And then drop drop other colours in. Any any colours you've got, like I've got a bit of flesh bit of the shadow, bit of the blue, um, just drop it in and dro let it just dry off a little bit. You can leave it for a little while and then drag a flat brush down it just to sort of blend them all in and give you that sort of nice building tone. Works quite well. That. What colour should we do these? Um, are they rocks? It looks like, I thought it was St. Michael on the main at one stage. <laughs> It's um hey, I haven't used it yet, so that comes to me favourite little mop. I'm gonna make that damp. Ooh, naughty! I went over a leg. <laughs> Just trying to be, make it damp selectively, so I can just drop some colour in. But I've got all those um. I haven't got that many of the backgroundy colours on here. It's a bit of raw sienna. Just drop it in, I think. On top of the water. Classic watercolour technique. Try and miss her leg. Which I haven't painted yet. Could have a Christmassy feel about it, this picture. I don't know. When it's... <laughs> All these baubles. I would, mate. I'd like to see <laughs> see what Joyce does to it. Mm. She, she's passionate about the, um, the, yeah, this subject. See, Noreen, I just put my paint in that permanent, right. practice, which I know intuitively is going to be flipping strong. It's a very um, fugitive colour. So I can use the side of the board just to check that I'm not going to dip me. I don't always do it right, but 
check that I'm not going to dip my brush on the paper with a big solid blob of colour. Balance. So what I put over there, I see it's so strong. So strong. I'm going to add some green on it now. One of the things we learned, I don't know who told me this, but if you get um, permanent rose, alzerian and crimson, those two are similar, and add green to it. I think that might be Mark Entwistle, actually. Gives you a, a really interesting dark not quite black for obvious reasons but for two colors it comes out really nice and <coughs> how many how often do you look at um sort of hedgerow in distance or just you think that's not green you know in the bottoms and you think it's, it's flipping black. And one good way of getting it is to, or a good variation is green. I think I'll go a bit further over there. Flying on the hoof here, I'll use the flat brush to do the same similar thing to the well it's not flat similar thing that I just did to the building lower it and just drag it see what very slightly with a brush very lightly see if I can blend it in a bit don't know why it just seems to be the thing that I should do <laughs> that's already <laughs> That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? <laughs> well, no, because you're creating... I haven't finished that building in the middle yet, but I'm waiting for the other one to dry. But the classic um, one for me, Noreen, for darks is burnt umber. Right. And blue, any blue. Right. That gives me... I At the end of the picture... I, I'll mix up a, a wadge of that and then look at, have a look at your reference or whatever, and then yeah. start adding some darks using that, you put in some real dark shadows and you'd be surprised how that can bring, bring your picture to life, you know? Right. At least Edna used to do that at the... One of the old ladies at the art group we used to go to. She'd spent an hour and a half, like we all do, you'd be up in and having a bit of a cup of tea <laughs> and a chin wag. And she'd do the do all the blocking in and the bulk bulk of the picture. And then that's everybody's going out the door. She said, David, David, over to you. <laughs> and that's <laughs> what I ever did. That's what I used to do, is just put in the the darks just mix up. That's all it ever needed. So she was a good artist, or is a good artist. She started me on this journey of, anyway, I was exhibiting somewhere. I was in Christchurch High Street in the center there. And she came in. And sort of chat. Hello, hello. How are you? Like she does. Have you um? Could you um consider coming to the church and doing our coffee mornings? And that's how it all started. Oh. And uh, brilliant. She was magic, lovely. Right, I think I might. Oh, I've got to find a few more shadowy bits I want to put on. If it wasn't for her, I'd probably be working in computing still somewhere or something like that. <laughs> well, we're tired now. We told what you do. Everyone's looking forward to Thursday. 
Let's see what the, the wicked plan is. <laughs> it's a, you're getting so many conflicting statements. It's going to look after the pensioners and the poor. He won't. <laughs> Oh, anyway, let's not go there. Still looking for bits of darks now, ready for the the plan for later. It doesn't look too bad. I think that looks a bit dark there, but hey ho. One of the things we don't, I don't buy anymore, Noreen, is um, a lot of the books and the people use it. A lot is Alzerian crimson, alizarin crimson. Well, I think alizarin fugitive is it means the opposite to what I thought it would. It, it's fugitive, so by that it's not light fast. Right. So as time goes on, you'd be surprised that it does happen. It fades, so you've right. got pictures, and so. It, it it fades back, probably outlive live us. I don't know, but it does. If you're exhibiting outside in the sun or in a sunny position in a gallery, even uh, after, if you've been there for the like summer season, towards the end of when you're packing things away in September or late August, your pictures look totally different to what they did when you set them up in May. <laughs> well, certain areas of them. Gosh. I used to, I don't know if it was Alzheimer and Crimson I did it with, but I used to do it on purpose and tell people when they were buying the picture that it is, it's built in to yeah, change. What colour was it? I can't remember. It was in the sand. Yeah, because I used to make my sand using... Um, just burnt sienna i'll show you i used to paint sand using burnt sienna not a lot of people do that well they they might do but all it was using what color sand raw sienna i used to just put water on the paper and just a very thin uh, sand all right. So sand to me, you can get different strengths of sand. But just adding the water to it, it blends. But the thing about it is, I don't know how fugitive it is, but it, it, if my object, the object that I used to say to people, the sand will change over the years because it will fade because it's just a very light coating of burnt sienna. And that, and that was sort of came about by walking down Muddiford King. And I noticed in the summer, you look at the sand and it's white. Mm. And foot, you think, because the sun and everything is sort of, oops, I think I need my camera. It's bleached. And mm. so that, that sort of set in my, my mind. My mind's eye, wouldn't it be great if your picture over time the sand color that you've got built in would turn to white? So that was, that was thinking madness beyond it. Just going to get my hair dryer on. I see. All right, I just want to make sure. It's out. I've got it out because the the um the dog yeah. was soaking wet when he came back. So it is here. I just want to make sure that the figure is dried off a bit. Or 
luckily I've got, like I said earlier, I've sketched two of these, so <laughs> something goes terrible. And I've got a, a backup for another day. <laughs> it won't. I'm, I'm content with it now. But I wanted to marry um, the splish josh or mix it, mix up the the blend of just random colour on the picture with something else. So what I wanted to do, I can't make up my mind which way around to do it. Water first and then colour, or colour first and then water. Such a, <laughs> it's chicken and egg, isn't it? If you do one, in, if you do it one way, it'll be wonky. If you do it the other way, it'll be wonky. Mm. Oh well. But the colour that I mixed up right from the start is the one that I'm using. Because I don't want it, I, I wanted it, to, I want it to be the opposite, you know, I want it to be, look like flesh. Oh, we're on for an early lunch now. <laughs> I just wanted to drop in. Flesh, but Put a bit around the edges there. See what happens. Because I've, I've done the groundwork. Just look for some highlights and avoid putting paint on them. Get your fish up quick. But it's the same thing. Putting paint. Um, dark colour on and then using more water to just let it blend down it's it's, 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 it's I don't know if, I was going to use the word exciting but I don't think that's the right one it's magic you're letting the water perform its magic Stuff happens when you put the put the strong bits of paint where you put your shadow earlier, and then water on top of that. Clean water. I got clean water. No, I haven't. Got two buckets of water here, and neither one are looking. Actually, it was bath water. <laughs> Yeah, straight up. I've still got the um the bucket or was it an old waste bin in the bath. So when I run the shower it fills it up so I could use it to um water the plants rather than waste the water. Now I don't need the water because it takes water out there anyway. But it's still in there and it just sort of fills up and overflows. But I use it for painting. No waste, not what not. What a man. I'm going to save the planet on me own. <laughs> Couldn't do a worse job than some of them out there. But on a serious note, I'm just, while it's damp, you can just drop bits in. Look for your, you did the groundwork right from the start, or well, hopefully we did, using the um the, the shadow tone. So now what we've got to do is put some skin on the bone. As I said earlier with the pun. But it's quite nice to all the watercolour techniques there. Stick some strong bit, I'll do it again. Strong bit of colour down. It's nice this brush because it's got a fine point on it. Put a nice bit of colour down. 
don't know why I'm not painting very well to the, well. I don't know. What happened? I seem to be doing too much da -da -da, up and down, stroking it instead of letting the paint do some of the work or the water and the blending of it, which is what I want to do. And I'm going to do it there. Just drop it in instead of there's a bit just under there that needs a blob of colour. Oh, we're off for an early lunch. I can see it coming there. And build it up. Or lift it off. Which is why I like these brushes. Noreen, these are the Rosemary & Co. Evergreen. Okay. This appointed rain. They've got a, they're a, they've got a stiffness to them. Right, okay. So yeah. with your trusty tissue in your hand, you can lift colour off. It's just to add, if you've got any highlights or you think... You look at it, it's your picture, you're in charge, you're you're the you're the person with the the power. Look at what you see. And if you see a highlight, or it looks like a highlight, you should just tissue in one hand. So it's just a lift it off, rub it off. Anywhere where you see or you feel that it needs some highlights. There's a line there. I put a blob of colour there just now. And this could go on for days. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, not all in one day. It's you do a bit, you do it, and then the next day, next morning, you look at it and you think, I need to lift it off. Or you try to. It doesn't always come off. Depends on how staining the paints are if it's permanent rose <laughs> it's called permanent rose for a reason so a lot of the color won't come off it needs a bit there isn't it? the only bit that's annoying me is there's a bit in there I think I'm going to be lifting off. And since that could be a bit dark there, which is one of the techniques that we were experimenting with back in the lockdown was paint using the gouache as a if you like a a barrier an undercolor so that when you started to do to lift paint off it would you'd get a nice white or a, a smoothness about it and gouache it rehydrates as well so the next day or a week a few days later you could come back and <laughs> lift color off even, and it sort of blend you became a sort of makeup artist it's a, it was a quite a pleasant it's quite i don't know it's quite <laughs> relaxing in a way it's quite a pleasant way of painting and you never quite never quite um know what you're going to get one stroke one stroke on push off one stroke off that's what i was on about er earlier back going like this that's not it's not the way i like to paint but one stroke and move on i don't know 
The rigor might be nicer. Use the rigor to emphasize a few of those. Oh, I picked up a different. Hmm. How many rigors have I got on the desk? God knows. This is a different one. I've never seen. I've seen this one before. <laughs> Rose, oh, it's a rosemary and co. Oh, it's one of those evergreens. It's a. It's an oil brush. Oil, an oil rigger. Hello. Hello. You all right? Oh, okay. yeah, it's a telephone, Dave. Oh, I thought you, I thought, I thought you were going, hello, oh, can't hear you. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. crackling in on the line. <laughs> I think one of the, the asteroids just coming down now. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's one of the scam calls because it's bank security. Yeah. Press one. Um, oh, don't go there. Uh, no, we're not. No. Just we turned it off. Yeah. yeah, I one of my um because one of my astronomy colleagues or acquaintances, one of the guys I was on Clydesdale Astronomy uh, Society last night. They, we still use Zoom, a lot of us, and um, his job. He's retired now. He was saying his job was um to do with um used to help the, the army, the police, the government on security. Oh, right. Mm. These hackers against mm. hackers. Interesting. I was a bit worried about that. Mm. And uh, <laughs> do you know one of the, the worst place to get your phone hacked? Or you think? Huh? Costa. Coffee oh. shops. Really? Yeah. Good job if, I don't go in there. He, did yeah. it, he, he was saying he did a... If he's listening to this, he'll be laughing. He did a, an interview, or we did an article in the Daily Telegraph, and um, one of the reporters, or somebody got in touch, said, blah, blah, blah. Uh, can we have a chat? And he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He met him in Winchester, not that far away from us, mm. in Hampshire. Isn't it? And um, Went out for a coffee at Costa because he, in his mind's eye, he knows what what the score is, and uh, they he said one in there with the reporter, you know, having a chat about the pitfalls of this stuff. Said the reporter, he set his laptop up with the detection software on it. Yeah. Said the one in there more than five minutes, and the reporter's phone was hacked. Really? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. He said if you. So what people what these people do they they go in um they can sit in Costa with their um laptop oh, of course. pretending to be working yeah. and they've got the adapter on there and they just they can just hack all your personal details off your phone oh God. while you're chatting having a coffee yeah so I think the upshot is if you're going to a Costa don't, wear, don't don't use your phone. No, yeah. no. Switch your phone off. But then again, modern phones, you can't switch them off. If you switch it off, it's still on. Always live, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, that's why the um has benefits like as a police can find dead bodies and <laughs> yeah. oh gosh. Well they can. Mm. That's how they've done it in the past. Right, I'm they, gonna have to go now, Dave, What time so. is it? Um, seven minutes past twelve. See, I told you we, we won't get an early lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Well, I'll see you all next week. I'll yeah. send you the link later. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Good luck. Bye. Well, there's no luck involved here. It's just my. <laughs> it's just well, for skills. us, for us, for us, not you. <laughs> okay, then. Right. Bye. 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 Joshy. Uh, the um. Colour I've I've used that that colour I mixed up right at the start to show that to use for flesh. I've used that on on the figure, and um, I just fell off the fell off the end of my brush. Yeah.
bending down gets worse the older you get. Or is it the grain gets further away? <laughs> I'm just using that flesh that I've got here. Who made it? St. Petersburg. Who was it the other day? Somebody said, I'm not sure. I think it was Pauline, wasn't it? I'm not yeah, sure about I... buying that because it's Russian. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did say that. No, it's made him wear them in Dorset. Oh. Um, yeah, anyway. They probably renamed it by now. You can use that to add a little bit of information, a bit of highlights, because we haven't used any, or I haven't, I haven't used anything dramatically dark on the uh, picture. So I can use, I can just flick through and use that to, not as a white, but as a sort of a, a fleshy highlighty colour. This baby bit, oh, I, I can't get me head around that. What's, yeah. all that. what's all that about? Mm. When you start to do it and you, 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 you're, you start questioning what is it you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing, it takes, it's, your heart goes out of it a bit. Oh dear. Oh, we got a crash. Program. Oh, we're crashing Re now. Scan. You're crashing. Yeah, reimage. Search searchchap.xa has recently crashed. This is your reimage stuff telling me. Oh. It's telling me to scan now, so I'm just going to turn that off. Okay. I've retired from computing, you know that. Don't blame me. <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah. Hey. That was be Tuesday mornings at the uh, the church art club. It was I used to advertise it and say, well, if you if you want, you can just bring your computer <laughs> invariably. We'll have a look at it, have a look at that as well. <laughs> Occasionally it became a computer help class as much as a, an art thing gosh to be so talented it's um <laughs> the only thing i miss about pre-lockdown is going into the um the care home next door and and doing me guitar and singing the songs for them. that was great fun yeah. just adding a bit of blue to my shadow color but this is the boring bit because you can spend well personally as i keep saying i like i like what i do during the morning on tuesdays but equally i like looking at it again wednesday morning because it dries everything changes it, it just I don't know if it's the colours I'm using, the paint or whatever. But everything seems to change. I start seeing, it shrinks back and I start seeing extra um, details and that and more shadows. If, just a line like that that you put in now, tomorrow morning, I'll blend it in. Tomorrow morning, it'll, it'll make, it, make it look like it's more... More of a round. You should have waited like the sun's come out. Yeah. More of, you know, more solid. But the idea of putting those those um, light bits in on, on the early stage is to do that anyway. To find, because what you're trying to do is find some some extra three dimensions. You know, give it more more of a roundness to it. And this stone colour, well, it's not stone, this, this is flesh, the St. Petersburg um, flesh colour. Because of the nature of the beast, it dries. When you first put it on, you think, oh, that's a bit, a bit strong, but it doesn't, it fades back. And the colour underneath subtly comes through, which is the amazing thing about it. What I've tried to achieve, or tried to do, something like that, 
is get that trying to put some naturalness into the statue i don't want it to look like a post post apocalyptic creature one of the things i tried earlier and i was saying i'm indecisive and the best way to approach it i'll show you briefly oh it's not too bad i've just stood up um i did it on this one of these bits these smaller books was how to the how to how I was going to do the figure how how would I do it would I you could for example paint it with blue first turquoise and then drop in some raw sienna that will give you that can you see it that sort of mechanical doodle if that was a leg or an arm or whatever you can do that and let that blend in that was um an option and the beauty of um, whoops something just flew at me um the, the positive bit about that the way i've done it actually was to use just a plain flesh tone but if i as i as it's drying back and it's it's sort of easing back and at some point you could drop in the blue into that so the options are there there's so many different ways you can sort of approach it and, and feel it um you just that's why i said earlier right at the start i'm just gonna have to go with the flow and see what happens because it's one of those Chrissy will have fun with this yeah. I think yeah. I think Chrissy's going to struggle with the left hand <laughs> you're going to how long before your plaster comes off do you reckon I've got in a splint now it's not in the plaster anymore still um, awkward isn't it yeah, I've got um, physio on the 23rd. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I'm not allowed to drive until the 20th of December. So that'll be 10 oh, weeks. Okay. That's a long time, isn't that? Yeah, it'll be 10 weeks altogether. Mm. Like halfway. Brilliant. Right. So let's see what I've got here now. Yeah, okay. The only disappointment is, well, a bit what you guys might like to not do that I did was um, approach the this a bit different, make it green. I can't because my paper's soaking wet. This is Arsh's um, hot press paper as well, actually. It's not, so it's quite, it's not strong. It's not dense paper. It's, it's point of the oh, oh, oh. brush just disappeared. Yeah, just use raw sienna on it. Yeah, if I'll get away with it now. The raw, the raw sienna will sit on top of the mess that I made underneath. I'm always something doesn't feel right I think that that's better than it was um, at this stage on a Tuesday morning the paper is always so looking wet or that it's awkward to do much to it. add some green onto that my green Noreen is um I think I can't remember 
<laughs> but in that thing, I got tubes of viridian. So I put a, a dollop of viridian in it and right. hookers green. And um, where they meet is the green that I end up using roughly. <laughs> I just squiggle my brush in it because viridian on its own is horrendous. You can't use that. It's just like, looks ridiculous. But as soon as you blend it with other colours, um, it turns into something really nice. But that's all damp there. So it, it's never going to look how I want it to look. Let's get me rigger. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is put a line just going down like that. I think it'll work. Won't make it darker later. It's just a, a sort of shadow line, really. And a bit of. <gasps> much <laughs> you can always tell when i've done something that i didn't want to this is what of the intake of breath happens <gasps> no be interested in what i feel about this tomorrow morning when i look at look back at it won't it but at this moment in time it is what it is Only two things we did yesterday was the wallet and things. Yeah. yeah. But I've added a bit more flesh to it than what it, what it is on the original. Brazil. I'm looking forward to, to what the Joyce does of this as well. Not bad for a morning's work. That needs working on there. We can't do much about it at the moment because it's damp and horrible. <laughs> Could get the um what's this thing called? Fan brush. And just say what the heck? That's all it is, I think. And my problem is that what's annoying me is that bit just here. I think I could extend it. <gasps> Watch it. Over to the other side. Hang on, just use a stiffer brush. Just extend it over here. Let's get these daft moments towards the end. All later on. Mm. No, it's not gonna it's not gonna play, is it? The shape in that that's that's annoying me when it's dry i'll put some twiggy bits in or not mm -hmm. it's just that that's the only bit that's annoying me at the moment anyway the rest of it is what it is quite mm. happy quite content more of that he's showing me this morning. But when you've done yours, lady. Mm -hmm. I think Noreen's been doing one as 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 we speak. Yeah. So hers is gonna shine everyone. Oh, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what you can do in an hour. Yeah. I met there used to be a guy I met on a market story oh, i'm a watercolor painter if it takes more than half an hour it ain't a watercolor <laughs> thought, what? that's really con that's contentious <laughs> say it how it is mate bit of burnt umber and blue 
flick it in. Put a path, maybe. Don't know. I have to let it dry and think about it. All you get, all I'm getting there is mud at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make. I'm going to make us a, a pig's ear out of a sow's ear if I keep <laughs> mm. keep trying to it. <laughs> fondle it. Well, it's okay. It's over yeah, to you no, guys good. now. Hmm? Never that's good. I'll wait till Mel comes. I'll probably have a little play up there, and. One of the things that I'm always recommending is to get some watercolour pencils and when it's bone dry, you can quite quite easily just go over a few areas and touch it up. I don't know what colour that is. Oh, blimey, yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite what I had in mind. But you know what I mean, you can just go over and tighten it up, which I'll probably, if it, was, if it was going on in for sale or something, that was what I'd do. Shouldn't have done that, Dave. Shouldn't have done that, should I? There you go. Put a bit of flesh on it. Oops. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. But that was one of the reasons, Noreen, that I used the um, the edge of the paper as a palette. Because yeah. those colours are dry. When they dry, tomorrow or next day, you've got them there. You've only got to wiggle them with a little bit of water and you've got a bit of extra colour yeah. that you used on your painting that you can touch up. If you see anything you're not happy with. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Day. It's just it's a bit damp. Yeah. Well, I've made a few mis I've made the mistakes, so you don't need to, you know. <laughs> he says. Hmm. Yeah. It looks looks like it looks okay on the it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's different. I can't compare it to the photo because I've changed the background completely. Wait. Yellow pencil might be a that watercolor pencil. That yellow might be an inspirational moment because when it's dried tomorrow, I could quite quite legitimately say right i put if i from literally right had some highlights of that yellow pencil on the right hand side of the picture because if you look at her left breast there's a shadow on that side underneath it so anything the opposite side to that coming from the right hand side i could quite easily put some use that yellow to make it stand out give it a little bit of a, a lift oh. is it gone okay. I think it's this, this. Yeah. so I can do you think the other side I can use this yellow Give it a give it a lift. Give it a golden. It's not going to quite work because it's dry. Bit of gold might even work. Yeah, that. So the possibilities on a simple Tuesday morning. Doodle are endless. Just by you can lift it. Say, say to you, make a decision. Say, look, there's some light coming from one side or the other. And I'm just gonna 
add some some gold in, some light colour, and sharpen it. It's nice. Okay. Wait and see what Melanie says. <laughs> It does it doesn't it, when it's subtle. It's subtle enough. It doesn't yeah. over, over blend, overtake it. Awesome! Oh, I enjoyed this morning. Yeah, no, it looks really good. Mm, very good. Very effective. Mm. Remove the spotlight. Well, I'll, I'll put another. I'll do a sing song on the video. <laughs> At the end, I don't know why I've been doing that. I was going to do it earlier today, but the um, the dog was sat on my lap, so. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a lovely little thing. We mm. mate. It's funny, isn't it? When you um, when you're working, you don't notice the temperature. Now, once you start, you think, oh, it's getting cold. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, at least the sun's come out here. Eh? Yeah. So, it feels yeah. Yes, it's looking good here. <laughs> awesome stuff. Mm. Well, that was an early lunch. We're getting a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, if you, Noreen, if you say, yeah. if you, if you um, if you do one or when yeah. when you complete it, if you send it to me, I'll put yeah. it in the on the gallery online. Okay, yeah, I shall do that. No problem. What's yeah. that, Gordon? You'll have to speak, and then it'll come. I was going to wait for David. Oh. Hello. Oh. You know the Christmas card you printed for us. Mm -hmm. no. Can you? Well. It's faded badly, and I just wanted to know whether you were using proprietary inks or whether they're the cheap inks. It's the blue that's gone out of it. Yeah, they would have been. They weren't. They would have been cheaper ones. Yeah. Okay. Because I always, I know, I used, I used to, when I do my greetings cards for like what they two pound fifty each or three for a fiver when I'm out selling them. Yeah. Um, I used to say, well, I don't want to use um, high quality ink, so I don't want people to, I don't want them to keep to last, because <laughs> uh, I want them to come back and buy another one. <laughs> well, you no, know, but so many people used to take them. If it's like a holiday picture of Bournemouth Beach, Mudderford Key, Salisbury, uh, what's that place called? Stonehenge, all those sort of holiday places that I've used to paint to flog. Well, they used to take them home and frame them. So they're, they're getting a free picture as well. A signed Wanted. print. <laughs> or a, and I used to sign the cards as well, like an idiot when I first started. Really? Um, they're getting a signed uh, print that they were putting in sort of little small six by eight frames for two quid yeah. mm -hmm. I, next to it on this on my store i'd have like i don't know a 10 by 8 print for 15 quid or whatever in a little frame well, you know i, so, mm. I stopped doing that yeah. um, i think my new printer what you're saying is you didn't want us to keep those <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's it that's basically it. yeah so, we yeah. must have kept it in the sun then you must have had it out on the side in the sun because I've got one of yours here, cards from last year on my desk. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that is perfect. That's praise indeed. <laughs> well, no, the reason that it's on here is because on the back I put from the original painting by Pauline Barnes. Oh. <laughs> and it's not, it's Gordon. Bennett's, it's Gordon Coleman's <laughs> picture. Because <laughs> on the back, I've got a little logo yeah. type thing that I did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 
Mm. I know, I'm not, so it's been on my desk, well, floating around here for, since last December. Oh. And I've been thinking, why is that on my desk? Yeah. <laughs> Reason I'm asking, I'm looking for, a, we're looking at buying a printer. We was looking yeah, at, Michael. looking at an ET Epson. Do you know anything about them? Any good? Get, get what I've got. What's that? It's called, uh, ET 1810. Is, is, it, is it a front fill one? No, back loading. I don't use front. I mean, front ink. Pardon? The ink. Is it in separate long bo bottles, big big tanks? It's an eco tank, yeah. Yeah. It's Eight an 1810. It's the most amazing thing I've ever bought. I've only had it two weeks. Yeah, well, that's, oh, what, right. that's what I was going to buy. That's yeah. Right. That's what we got our eye on, okay. Yeah. Get it direct from oh, Epson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was 160 quid, was it? Yeah. Something like that. That's cheap. With the, with a set of inks that are supposed to last about three years. Yeah, where did you get that from? Epson Direct. Direct from Epson. Okay. Uh, and then the, the ink, hang on, I'll show you. The ink. The ink comes in. Noreen's taking notes here. It's all coming down. <laughs> the um the inks come in bottles, tubes like this. Yeah. And it's a leap of bloody faith, I tell you. Because you in the on the printer, you've got like four obviously contain well, four things to put them in, one yeah. for each colour. And you lift the thing up, and then you've got, <laughs> you've got to take unscrew the lid. Yeah. And it looks like that. Yeah. You think, hey, all right, this is gonna work. And you gotta tip it upside down and put it on this on the top of the thing at the same time. And it and it's just gravity and convection. It just goes glug, 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 fills it up. And when it gets obviously once the pressure equalizes, it stops. Yeah. And you take it off. But they must have some sort of really neat ball valve in here that yeah. Oh, it was. A, I thought, oh no, the last thing I want is flipping printing ink going all over the place. Yeah, uh, I have heard will. that comment before. Yeah, oh, <laughs> brilliant. Not alone. Okay. Well, those prints that I, those prints that, that I've been doing, I, um, I always print one color photo A5 glossy one. For Tuesday mornings of the subject, or when if I'm drawing it, and uh, the colour that's coming out of that is as good as the printer that I've got, that I had rather, that had eight. You know, it was a Studio yeah. A3, that was an Epson, but it was eight cartridges. Wow. Okay. Two blacks, two, three blacks, I think, two blues, two reds, magentas or whatever. A yellow. We went to Curry's actually to, to look at them and buy one, and they hadn't got any of the ET range in stock at all. They were great, they were piles up to the ceiling of printers for 50 quid and 60 quid instead. There wasn't one decent printer in there. No, cartridges are a thing of the a thing of the past. I mean, they're um A, they're expensive, and B, they're they're not good for the environment. No. They got blooming chips in them and all kinds of things. I only I've got two envelopes to post downstairs. I've found the place that you can send them to to have them recycled. Mm. It wasn't until I looked at the envelope yesterday. It's free. You frozen? Uh, you frozen, Dave? You've run out of time. Hello, Dave. I bet he's run out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> bye, everybody. I'm away too. Thanks. So, bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Have a good bye. week. Did and you. Yeah. And you. <laughs> Did you freeze then, Dave, or not? No, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's, gone. he's tying down. He's right? not. He's still. Yeah. <laughs> no, Run he's... out of time. Yeah. Still there. Oh, his time's gone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Turn it off and put it.
Yeah, I reckon you can't do it. Because I'm the host. <laughs> There's nobody else there. Nobody is. Yeah. End meeting for all. Come all you no hopers, you jokers and rogues. We're on the road to nowhere. Let's find out where it goes. It might be a ladder to the stars. Bye. <laughs> I'm a no-oper. <laughs>